Good day, boys and girls. Um, I've got a very interesting T-shirt on today. And I think there's, there's some value for us in, in reading what's on there as well. It says, when you feel like quitting, think about why you started. Good day. Now you can see my face as well. Um, if we think about quitting, if we say that the pressure of the world is too much for us, then we should first think, why are we not part of the world? Why are we not doing what the world is doing? That's a reason. The reason is to follow Christ. So when you feel like quitting, when you feel like the world is too much, think about the reason why you started. That is Jesus Christ that did everything for us. But okay, all right, um, let's get to the lesson. Um, last week we, we did um, a couple of verses in Matthew 6, verses 5 to 8, which was really what the Lord said, how you should not pray, how you should not behave when you pray. Now, I made a, a promise last time that as from this week onwards, we're going to look at how to pray. What should we do when we pray? Now, um, last week we said we should not be puffed up. Um, we should not be like the Pharisees. Um, and th this week onwards, we're going to learn how we should pray, what prayer is all about. Now, first of all, did you or did you not read the Lord's Prayer as I asked you last week? Well, I hope I... I can't hear you, but I hope that you all shouted, Yes, Uncle Anton, we did read the Lord's Prayer. So, that's where my hope is. Now, we also said that... Um, Praying should not be a shopping list. That's what we discussed last week. It's not just, Lord, give me this, give me that, give me that. There is so much more to pray. Um, now, this week we're going to start seeing what prayer should be about. Now, let's first just read Matthew 6, verses um, 9 to 13. Um, there, there's also a, path, a passage in Luke chapter 11, uh, verse 2 to 4, which is effectively the same, um, just from a different writer's pen, but also the Lord's Prayer. But in any case, in Matthew, it says, In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, obviously, there, there might be slight differences if you are reading from the ESV, for example, um, because I've read from the New King James Version. Um, and if you were watching the sermons in the last two weeks you would have recognized that uncle brian has said that he's now converted um, not meaning that he was lost before but that he's now using the new king james version rather than the esv um, when he prepares when he does his normal reading but he's still cross-referencing various um, different translations which is a good thing in any case um, if you look at Matthew 6, verses 9 to 13, there are three distinct sections in it. The first one is um, verse 9 to 10, which is really praise to our Heavenly Father. Um, then the second section, which is 11 um, and 13, or at least <coughs> excuse me, part of verse 13, is, is about um, asking the Lord what our desires are, um, but it's not just worldly desires, it's desires that um, need to be fulfilled for us to, to better serve the Lord, So, but it's not, not blackmail, keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And then this third section, um, which is the last part of verse 13, is a 
again a section about praise to the Lord. Now, what we're going to do to, tonight, today, is um, verse 9 and verse 10, which is the first section, and that's a section about praise. Let's just read it again. In this manner, therefore pray. That's what the Lord Jesus is saying himself. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Right, now, it's really saying to us who we are praying to. Um, but before we, we, we get into all of that, I just want to refer you to a chapter in the Old Testament, or a verse in the Old Testament, uh, Malachi verse 1, or chapter 1, verse 11. Now, for you that do not know where it is, and by now you should all know where it is, it's really a, probably about 20 pages back into your Bible. It's the very last book of the Old Testament, where Matthew is the very first book of the New Testament. Right, but Matthew chapter 1, verse 11 says, for from the rising of the sun, even to its going down, my name shall be great amongst the, the Gentiles. In every place, incense shall be offered to my name, and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Now, here the Lord says, my name will be made great. You will praise my name. And that is what we're doing in the Lord's Prayer. If we go to, to, to Matthew chapter 5 here, or Matthew chapter 6, really. It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name, meaning, may your name be holy. May your name be known with reverent fear to the nations. Your kingdom come, and your will be done, as it is on heaven, so also on earth. Right? So, very important. Why um, are we really looking at, at these verses? Um, there's a very good reason for that. But be, again, before we get to that reason, I just want to refer you to Psalm 103, verse 20. Now, there's a lot of cross-references in the Bible. And why is it important to have them? So that we know that the Bible is a unit that there's not different stories that is not related to each other at all, but that the whole story about the Bible, the whole book of the Bible, from Genesis through to Revelation, is about Jesus Christ and the salvation. Right? So, Psalm 103 verse 20 says, Blessed be the Lord, you His angels, who excel in strength, who do His word, heeding the voice of His word. Bless the Lord, all you, his hosts. Now, this is really related to verse 10. And what does verse 10 say here? It says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that is just one example of, <coughs> excuse me, of a description of, of how it will be in heaven, where the, the angelic host will praise the Lord's name. So, the first section is all about praise. It's all about making the Lord's name great. Now, so, first of all, who is saying this to us? It's our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, who is He? He is very much part of God. God consists of three supernatural holy beings. It's the Lord Jesus Christ the Father, and then the Holy Spirit, right? So it is, as a matter of fact then, God that is instructing us to praise His name. Now, why would He instruct us to praise His name? Is it so that He may feel good? No, definitely not. It is... I've written it down here in capital letters, N-O, no. It is not so that God can feel good about himself. Um, it is so that we can realize who we are talking to. We are not just talking to a friend. 
a lot of people would say, "Ah, oh, Jesus is your friend. The Holy Spirit is there to serve you. Um, no, no. God is holy. And when we pray, when we introduce ourselves, so to speak, to God through introducing Him to us in this way, then we realize that this God is a special God. It is not just somebody. It's not just a friend. It is not a skivvy. Not somebody that is just doing things for us. It is a holy God. He's a maker of heaven and earth. He's the most powerful <coughs> that there is. And the word most powerful is probably wrong. He's not the most powerful. He is all powerful. He is all present. He's always around us. He knows exactly what we're doing. Which means he's all knowing. So there is nobody like him. And that's why we start off with this way um, when we pray. Um, so what this first two verses in the introduction of the Lord's Prayer really is saying is have respect and fear the Lord. Have a reverent fear for the Lord. He's not your friend. He is a father. Yes, he is a father that loves us, but he's in heaven. He created heaven and earth. Um, he is so special that we can't even imagine who he is. So do not make light of who God is. Um, I don't know really how to explain it to you, but he is so good, he is so great, he is so powerful, he is so mighty, um, <coughs> that even Moses, that was a God-fearing man, knew that if he would see God, he would die. And that's why the Lord put him in the cleft of a rock and covered his face so that Moses could only see him from the back when he passed by. This is our God. This is the God that we're praying to. That if we see him, we will surely die. Right? That is how magnificent, how holy this God is. That we as sinful beings will die if we see him. Right? But that is not all doom and gloom. There is hope for us as well. And that hope is in Jesus Christ that has died on the cross. That is standing between us and the Father so that we can have eternal life. John 3.16, you've all heard about that. For so God loved, or so loved God the world that he gave his only begotten son so that everybody that believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So there's hope. It, it, it might be a, an awesome, dangerous God. One of the pastors that, that I listened to a while ago said, God is dangerous because you can die, like said Moses. So, yes, he's a dangerous God. He's a holy God. But through Jesus Christ, there's hope for us so that we don't have to perish. And keep that in mind. Um, and again, go back now. Read um, the Lord's Prayer again. You can read it every night. You don't have to read it only once. Read it every night until next week. We will discuss the second part on what we can pray for, what we can ask for. Until then, boys and girls, I'm praying for you. I hope that you are really doing well during this period of, of COVID-19 and the lockdown. It seems as if restrictions are being lifted, but that doesn't take our responsibility away. So we still need to be careful. We still need to be responsible. But God bless and be safe.